thousands of miles apart and having had no contact. Ancient Chinese and Mesoamerican peoples shared a reverence for jade above all other materials, both believing it to be the key to immortality. We've uncovered the history of jade in China in parts one and two of this series, and today we're exploring the pre-Columbian jade of the Americas, which was lost and only relatively recently rediscovered. This is Jordan with Jewels of the Trade reminding you not to trust random gemstone information on the internet, especially when it comes to jade. Be sure to subscribe if you're looking for a reputable source of accurate gemstone information. Today, we're talking about jadeite jade in Guatemala as it pertained to ancient peoples, its disappearance after the Spanish Inquisition, and then its rediscovery in the 20th century. Helping us out today will be renowned archaeologist Mary Lou Reidinger, who actually rediscovered jade in Guatemala with her husband in the 1970s and started the very first Guatemalan jade business in Guatemala. The story of Guatemalan jade goes back three to four thousand years and begins with the ancient Olmecs, possibly the oldest known major Mesoamerican civilization. The Olmec peoples had a complex calendar, massive stone sculptures and sacred complexes, and might have even understood the concept of zero in mathematics. I think you can look at, at Olmec and Maya as having very similar roots. The people uh, and the traditions and the Olmec sort of evolved and coexisted with the Maya and then they became less predominant culturally and the Mayas became the dominant culture, but there are actually seven different cultures over a period of 3,000 years that all work jade. The Aztec culture and the Toltec culture and the Zapotec culture, Teotihuacan culture, Costa Rican culture, uh, they all had their own jade traditions, their own jade styles, um, their own jade story, but they were all getting it from the same source. Used for ritualistic masks and carvings, ceremonial weaponry, currency, and more, archaeologists have found evidence of jade usage by the Olmec and Mayan cultures from the Motagua River in now Guatemala to modern day Costa Rica from as early as 1500 BC. Uh, the the jade in Guatemala was was really the first pieces that were worked and traded and carved. It's about 1500 BC. So I count 1500 BC to 1500 AD. And the reason it all stopped in 1500 AD is because of the Spanish conquest. And the Spaniards came to the New World uh, looking for gold. They came uh, to convert people to Christianity. They found the local people worshiping jade. They declared the worship of jade to be idolatry, worship of false idols, punishable at the time of the Spanish Inquisition by torture and death. So it didn't take the local people very long to figure out if you wear it or trade it or carve it, guess what, they're gonna kill you. So within 20 years of the Spanish conquest, uh, the jade fell into the background. Nobody knew about it, nobody talked about it. And the jade standard was replaced by the gold standard because jade was also money. It wasn't just uh, it wasn't just uh, uh, something that was a luxury trade item. It was actually the money that was used to pay for things. So. Why were these people so drawn to jade? We know it's one of the toughest gemstones in the world, so it can be carved into tools and weapons for long-term use. We understand its complex gemology and rarity, but what natural draw did the Olmec and Maya people have towards the stone? Jade to them, um, they realized that everything was going to die and be destroyed and be demolished and that hurricanes and earthquakes and Floods were going to carry everything away, and the only thing that was permanent was jade. So jade became the equivalent of talking about immortality or eternity, and they started burying their rulers with their bodies covered with jade the same way the Chinese did. They buried their rulers with their bodies covered with jade. It's interesting that the Chinese and Mesoamerican views towards jade were so similar. Jade had a strong association with royalty in both cultures, which shared some similar views on calendars and astronomy, the four cardinal compass points, and fun fact, it's believed that both cultures actually believed that they saw a rabbit on the moon instead of like the man in the moon. There were many connections between these two completely different peoples that didn't even know about each other. 
Hello? Fast forward to the 15th century when Spanish explorers arrive in the Americas. Having never seen jade before, mind you, they were offered Quetzal, Chalchihuitl, can't say, I don't know what I'm saying, literally don't know how to pronounce. I took Spanish in school. Quetzal. I guess this wouldn't have been Spanish. Either Quetzal Chalchihuitl was like the words that the Spanish used when they told the story, or Quetzal Chalchihuitl is what the Mayan people called it, or the Aztecs, I guess, at the time. I'm actually not sure. I don't know what language it is. They were offered jade by the native peoples. It was jade. I don't know what it was called. I can see the word. I don't know how to say the word. A gemstone that was carved and had been in circulation for an unknown amount of time. The Spanish were able to observe that the true source of this jade was even a mystery to the people who lived there. That the peoples of Central America themselves did not know where the jade mines were. It's said that Montezuma dispatched his ambassador to greet Hernan Cortez with an offering of jade beads saying, they are of great value, each one being esteemed more highly than a great load of gold. Naturally, this mysterious stone made its way to England around 1596 via the explorer Walter Raleigh, mentioning that the Spanish called it Piedra de Ijara, or Stone of the Kidneys. But the source of the jade was not found, and the jade culture of Mesoamerica was repressed to the point of very little regard for the stone. Eventually, the Central American peoples didn't even know how significant jade had been to their culture. Fast forward again to the early 1900s, when rumor of an ancient well piqued the interest of Edward H. Thompson. It was said that this ceremonial well in Chichen Itza had been used for ritual sacrifice. Other than humans, of course, what all had the Mayans sacrificed there? What was inside the well? Jade. It was jade. It was a lot of jade. These questions led to what may be the greatest archaeological find of the Americas, which uncovered a slew of jade statues, cups, bowls, celts, ceremonial weaponry, and more. This sparked an archaeological interest in the history of jade in the Americas. But even into the 50s, the source, like the original source of the pre-Columbian jades was still unknown. Where are the mines? Where did the Olmecs and the Mayans get the jade in the first place? Multiple scientists embarked on this treasure hunt with little success until... After he got hold of William Poshag's study, uh, which was published by the Smithsonian in 1957, uh, and he put it under my nose and I read it, I realized, of course, of course there's jade in the Americas. Let's go look for the jade in the Americas. I immediately went and got geological maps and saw where the, the, the tectonic plate boundary was and saw all of the fault lines on either side of the tectonic plate boundary and understood that the jade is formed through subduction faulting on tectonic plate boundaries. I always say jade is a love story. Jay Reidinger and Mary Lou Johnson fell in love searching for jade. They found jade in Guatemala and created the first major jade business in the country where they would mine, carve, and sell Guatemalan jade. They got married and created an incredible and far-reaching legacy that is beautifully told in the book, Stone of Kings, In Search of the Lost Jade of the Maya. Translucent blue jade still wouldn't be discovered in Guatemala until the turn of the century. And lilac jade and galactic jade were also discovered sometime after the stone was initially found. And today, Guatemala has a sense of pride in this historically significant and beautiful stone that they offer the world. Huge thank you to Mary Lou Reidinger for letting me interview her for this video. You can actually catch the full interview on my YouTube channel, link in the description. Show Mary Lou some love in the comments and tell her what you think of her discovery of Guatemalan jadeite jade. If you missed parts one and two, the history of jade in China, be sure to check those out and stay tuned for the history of jade part four. Like, comment, and please subscribe. These are Guatemalan jade. This is Guatemalan jade. This is Burmese. This is Nephrite jade.